Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Thursday mountain weather update. All right, let's go up to Big Sky, Montana. There's your Lone Peak tram cam. And what a beautiful sunrise. You've got that, that alpen glow across a lot of the higher uh, terrain right now. But it is very warm across the west. And I want to show you just how warm it is. So up at the top of Lone Mountain, They've got a weather observation station, and so it's at uh, it's the summit of Lone Mountain, 11,162 feet. The temperature right now is 33 degrees. So that freezing level, that rain snow line, is all the way up beyond 11,000 feet up there in Montana. That's how warm it is. Winds are blowing about 55 miles per hour up there out of the south. Very warm conditions, and it's it's not just in uh, Montana. I mean, it's it's all over the place. Up to Revelstoke, uh, they made a note here that Avalanche Canada has rated the avalanche in the backcountry, the avalanche danger, as high at all elevations because of how warm it is. In fact, some of their terrain is closed until a proper refreeze occurs. That's what they're saying. And you can see the temps. I mean, uh, sub-peak 2,300 meters. It's above freezing there. Uh, 1,950 meters above freezing, and at the base, it's well above freezing, 5 degrees Celsius. So, And you can see all the terrain that's closed as a result. So we're dealing with those warm temperatures. That is a obviously artifact of it being spring now. Uh, let me take you to radar. A lot of rain on radar. Some snow only at the very highest of elevations. Um, this is an impressive, it's a big storm, but it's a warm storm. Um, let me go to the northeast. Not much happening here in the northeast. But you do have uh, a period of moderate to heavy precip coming, both rain and snow. Talk about that in a sec. Let's go to water vapor. This is in the mid-levels. Uh, oranges and reds are going to be your drier air, but an impressive storm. Look at the spin, the yellow or the uh, the whites, the blues. That's going to be your moisture. Uh, big time spin moving into the uh, the Pacific Northwest. That's your area of low pressure. Another big low behind it. So you've got this feed of moisture moving out ahead of it, and that's what's producing that uh, that rain, a lot of rain, a lot of rain snow. Um, but a piece of that storm system will break off and brush Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, and Colorado between 328 and 330. So that's what's coming. That's what's next. Now, if I, I want to go back to the integrated vapor transport. I've been looking at this each day. Um, this is how you kind of spot the atmospheric river coming if there is one. This is for that San Francisco Bay corridor. There's a little bit of action the first week of April. Not as much as when we looked at this a few days ago. But nonetheless, it looks to me like the pattern, the storm track will shift further to the south for the first week of April and start to hit more of California, Nevada, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, and Colorado. Okay, here are my bullet points this morning, kind of reiterating what I just talked about. So that Pacific uh, Northwest storm continues in the 328, then it hits a piece of that will hit the Inner Mountain 328, 29, 30. Active flow first week of April. Here are the uh, here's my snow timeline, best odds of snow for Big Sky, the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Interior BC, the Pacific Northwest, Tahoe, and the Northeast. So notice, and I extend this all the way out into that first week of April. So, for example, in the Wasatch, you've got some light snow coming, late 328, moderate to heavy on 329, and then heavy 331 into 41 and 44. Colorado, you've got moderate to heavy coming late 328 through the morning of 330, heavy 41, light 42, and heavy 44. So you get the idea. And there's the, the northeast numbers. It looks like it's going to be a heavy mix between 329 and 331, and then rain on 43. So just, you know, it's, it's it's springtime. Everything's warmer. Let's go into Colorado. Here's the time height forecast for snow mass in the western uh, part of Colorado, the western slope there in Pitkin County. So this is a relative humidity forecast for the next 72 hours. You read this from right to left, and uh, you can see the dates at the bottom. But it's all dry now, nothing going on today and most of tomorrow. But then the green wall starts to move in. Um, late on the 28th through 29 and 30, so those those days, 29 and 30, will probably get some snow accumulation across Colorado. Jet stream forecast. So here's your jet stream winds up at about 30,000 feet in the atmosphere. These are the steering winds. 
Um, the brighter colors are the stronger winds. And I'm also looking for the dips, the kinks and the jet. Those are going to be your storm systems. So we'll start it off early today. We still have high pressure ridging across a lot of Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona. Very warm. All right, there's our big storm up in the Pacific Northwest. This is early on Friday, March 28th. It sends a little a little piece of the of the energy down through Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, and Colorado between late Friday and Saturday. Here's early Saturday. You can see the dip in the kinks in the jet. There's midday Saturday, there's late Saturday, and the low might actually spin up across the eastern plains of Colorado on its way out. So that's one piece, and then look behind it. There's a second little kink in the flow that comes through on Sunday through Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado, and then that moves out into the central part of the country. All right, here we are midday, Monday, March 31st. Another little sort of uh, area of low pressure or front kink in the flow. There, that is early on Tuesday, April 1st. That moves through. All right, so here we are. This is April 3rd, early April 3rd. A larger storm system moving in from California, and eventually that moves into the interior. Uh, here's early on Friday, April 4th. Okay, snow accumulation over time. Remember on this, the light blues are going to be under three inches of accumulation. Greens are three to six, yellow six plus, reds 10 plus. So most of your accumulation um, early today is going to be in the, uh, the BC area and parts of the Pacific Northwest, Northern Cal. Very high elevations. Recall how warm it is. Um, okay, here we are early on Friday, March 28th. Um, there's late on Friday, and that throws a little bit of that moisture down through parts of Utah and Colorado at very high elevations. You can see it start to flare right there late Friday into early Saturday, especially over parts of Colorado. And there goes the remainder of that storm system. Now, it might spin up here across eastern Colorado. This is very late Saturday into early Sunday. And we might have a rain-snow mix across Denver and the Front Range and the eastern plains, but a lot of the snow is going to be up through the higher foothills, the continental divide, the higher peaks, snow back through a lot of Wyoming, Montana, Yellowstone, and that departs, and there's another little area of low pressure behind that it comes through, and then it's gone. Um, then what we're left with, this is midday on Monday, March 31st, another storm system hitting the west coast. That moves into the interior. This is early. We'll call it early on Tuesday, April 1st, some snow through Utah, Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, and Colorado. That moves out. Another storm system hits the west coast. This is early on Wednesday, April 2nd. Uh, pretty good snow for the Sierra there, if that verifies. And then that sends some energy through Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, and a little bit in Colorado. A little bit more right there in Colorado. This is early on Friday, March, or Friday, April 4th. You can see some of the brighter colors in the central and northern mountains of Colorado. Okay, let's look at the numbers. Um, so all the way through the 31st, 8 to 16 inches in the Wasatch, about 10 to 12 up there in parts of Wyoming and Colorado. The biggest numbers are in the central to northern mountains, anywhere from 4 to 10 inches there, less in the southern mountains, and very little for northern New Mexico. In California, most of the snow is around Tahoe up towards Shasta. Now, later in the period beyond the 31st, some of that snow is going to work its way down towards Mammoth, and those numbers should be bigger. One to two feet up in the Pacific Northwest, anywhere from 8 to 12 inches through interior BC at the very highest of elevations. Uh, again, just it's incredibly warm right now. 10 to 12, 10 to 14 through only the highest of elevations of Idaho, 8 to 10 through the highest of elevations of Montana. That's the problem with spring. You just deal with these high freezing levels um, all the time. All right, here's the uh, snow forecast through 331 in the Northeast. Um, this one is in flux, and there's some question because how much of this is going to be rain and what will the exact elevation be for the rain snow line? Um, not totally sure, but four to nine inches should cover most places. Um, it may start out as snow, go over to a rain snow mix, and then eventually um, go back to, and here's that timeline, 329, 330, 331 a heavy mix, probably ending is all rain, and then 4-3 would be all rain. So again, that's how we reach these numbers. Um, okay, let's end on the big western map here. So 
we've got the, the warm temps, obviously. Once we bring in that more active flow for the first week of April, that should help to bring some of the air temps down in that area. All right, I wanted to end on um, a forecast. So there's a race that happens um, this weekend called the Grand Traverse, and it starts at roughly midnight on Saturday and runs through about noon on Sunday. Um, the forecast for the Grand Traverse, it starts in Crested Butte, goes over Star Pass and ends on Aspen Mountain. Looking at this, in so many years, the real fear is people want to do the full course. They don't want to have to do a half course, go out and turn around and come back to Crested Butte. They want to finish in Aspen Mountain, but it's all weather dependent. And right now, when you look at this, this time height forecast, um, so the dates on this would roughly be 2930. And so I'm looking at this. Yes, there is going to be snow this year. It's not a major storm system between Saturday and Sunday, but there is going to be light snow accumulation throughout the, throughout the event. And I'm thinking probably... Uh, probably one to two inches at the start, maybe another inch overnight, and then another probably one to two inches the morning of, of the finish. So, I mean, you could be looking at two to six inches, somewhere in that range of accumulation. That's over the whole course of the event. Looking at the winds, I mean, 15 to 25 mile per hour gusts appear to be the most common wind to me. Above tree line, probably 20 to 25 uh, mile per hour when you might have a gust of 30 above tree line. So it's one of those years where um, I don't, we're not looking at a major storm system based on the current track of this. It's a little bit farther than north, but it does brush the course, the Grand Traverse course, with snow accumulation during the event. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.